Let's begin by ensuring that we have all of the prerequisites that are needed for us to do ASP.NET Core development with Entity Framework. The first thing we're going to need is the .NET command line tool and the 3.1 SDK. And we can install that using yum on Red Hat Enterprise Linux or derivatives using this command yum install .NET SDK 3.1. And you'll see that I'm running this inside of a CentOS container because I already have this installed locally on my machine. I wanted to show you exactly what it would look like. And as you can see, it goes and downloads a number of dependent packages to install it. And then once we have the packages installed, we can then verify that we have the correct SDK versions by running .NET space dash dash list dash SDKs, which we're going to do next. There we go, .NET list SDKs. And you'll see that we have the 3.1.107 version of the .NET Core SDK. Now we need the tooling to be able to use Entity Framework and that means we need to use .NET Tool Install and we want to globally install the Entity Framework tooling and we just run this command and if you'll notice we don't currently have the .NET tools in our path so we'll need to add that to our path environment variable. Uh, for now, inside this container, I'm going to do it here. And we can confirm that everything is working by saying .NET EF help. And you'll see that we do have the Entity Framework Core .NET command line tools exactly as we expect. The next thing we need to be clear of is that we need to ensure that we have a container engine installed locally. So we'll either need Docker or Podman. Oh, pod man. Uh, you can have both. It really won't make much of a difference going forward in this lab. You can almost use them completely interchangeably. Some features in Podman are better. Some features in Docker are better. Uh, they're, they're mostly on par. The next thing we'll need to ensure is that we have Docker Compose or Podman Compose. This is used for us to compose containers together into a full application. In our case, we're going to stand up a database, an API server, a single page app front end, and potentially a uh, OAuth2 provider like Keycloak. Now, as you can always already see, I have an integrated development environment that I'm using. I'm using Visual Studio Code here. You could use Visual Studio, or you could use Writer, or you could just use a text editor, whatever you prefer. But make sure that you have a development environment that you're going to be comfortable writing C-sharp code in. The next thing we need to make sure we have is Node Package Manager. And using Node Package Manager, we want to ensure that we have installed the Open API Generator command line tool, version 5.0, which is currently in beta as of the recording of this video. Should be released very soon, probably no later than the end of November 2020. And as you can see, it installed rather quickly because I've already got it installed. We can confirm that it's working by saying open API generator version. And you'll see that it's 5.0 beta 2. The reason we want the beta 2 is 5.0 has lots of improvements around ASP.NET Core, and we want to use those improvements. Also, optionally, you can install a local Kubernetes environment to test things out. Uh, I'm going to be using Minikube and I'm using brew to install Minikube. You could also install Minikube in a number of other ways. There's a link to installation instructions in the lab document. 
So feel free to take your time and do that. That's all of our prerequisites. We now have everything we need to do ASP.NET Core with Entity Framework development on Linux or any other platform, Mac, Windows, you name it. In the next segment, we'll get started bootstrapping a new project.